Wow, how magical is that? Yeah, deserves a round of applause. JP Morosi live from Cooperstown. Good morning to you. You were just saying in the commercial break, Yay! one of your favorite places Yay! in all the land coming after a Lions win. How happy are you to be alive? Scale of one to 10, good morning. Yes, Lauren, good morning. Really honored to be here in yes. the plaque gallery itself, about 45 feet away from the statues of Mr. Ruth and Mr. Williams, just straight ahead behind the camera. The first class is about 20 feet the other direction. We are here in the presence of greatness. And I always love, Lauren, when you look at the plaques and those who served our country also have the medallion of the branch in which they served beneath their plaques. A, a wonderful touch that you see here at the Hall of Fame, and, and we cannot wait less than 48 hours now, Lauren, for when we learn the new class. And yes, there was a football game yesterday that was great, but here it's hard to talk about anything but the great game of baseball. Will Joe Maurer be in that new class? It's around this time we start looking at the tracker, and I was looking at it this morning. He's trending towards being, JP, a first ballot Hall of Famer. When he retired, did you think he would be the, that would be the case for him? Lauren, it's a great question. I think that the original projections were that eventually Joe Bauer would be a Hall of Famer, but perhaps not this quickly. And the reason why he is on that track, I think, is twofold. Number one, the positional value of a catcher. And number two, the majesty of his peak. Three batting titles in four years. And I love the detail. Craig Nordquist does such a great job researching the Hall of Fame for us here at the network. And he made the point that since 1900, seven batting titles combined, won by all catchers in Major League Baseball history. And Joe Maurer has three. It's very important to think about just how great he was for that peak. Again, when you're the catcher, the scale is a little bit different. This is the most demanding physical position on the diamond. Many would say mentally as well. And when you succeed at this level, I realize he didn't quite catch as many games as Johnny Bench. But here is where he is trending. Second right now only to Adrian Beltre at the top spot. And, and you look at Maurer as well. What we, you did reference, Lauren, the, a moment ago, the football game. I think it's very fitting that if we have a three-person class or a four-person class, we're going to have two quarterbacks in that mix. Of course, Todd Helton was Peyton Manning's immediate predecessor at Tennessee, and Joe Maurer, the first player ever who was the USA Today Player of the Year nationally in two different sports. He was committed to play quarterback at Florida State. So this is a place that I think today, and I know Harold, we always love talking about multi-sport athletes. Well, this is certainly celebrating the fact that you can be a multi-sport athlete all throughout childhood and even into college in the case of Helton and still wind up here. You saw that graphic, JP, right now. Four guys in if the tracker is your guide with Sheffield on the outside by half a point. Andrew Jones, I saw him on the screen not too long ago, 70.3%. This is only, of course, taking into account 50% of the vote. We sit here JP and we always talk about offensive numbers. How much does defense come into play when you discuss Hall of Fame candidacy? Well, you know, Lauren, it's a great question. And I think especially at that position, we just talked about Maurer as a catcher. And I believe that you give a little extra credit to the catchers because of how demanding their position is. Well, I would say the same is true for up the middle defenders, especially the deluxe center field defenders. And Andrew Jones certainly is in that category. We also have to think about Carlos Beltran and Torrey Hunter, both of whom, of course, are also on the ballot. I'm a believer that Hunter's candidacy is not getting the attention that it deserves. Uh, Torrey Hunter won nine gold gloves. Andrew Jones won 10. Jones, actually, when you look at games played, and it's a very important detail here, Gold Gloves won by Andrew Jones. He played the most games in center field of this, of this list. And look at the defensive war that Andrew Jones had in his career. Simply extraordinary. I, I think that Hunter, the, the defensive metrics there, Lauren, didn't really tell the full picture of what a dominant defender that Hunter was throughout his prime. Uh, I, I also believe that when you consider those, those three players, and, and Jones, maybe not this year, but you would expect at some point will gain entry to the hall. Beltron had a huge year-over-year -year increase from last year to this year among returning voters. Hunter, though, is still fighting 
that battle to just remain on the ballot. I think the gap between them is too large. I, I happen to vote for all three. I just believe that that position is so important. But uh, yes, I, I do think Hunter has been a bit underrated by many of my colleagues in the voting. Awesome conversation surrounding this class. I know you would agree. It's the end of January, by the way. Crazy talent left on the board, but Josh Hader spoken for goes to Houston. Uh, Matt and H were just talking about it with Ryan Presley there, and I know he was a part of the discussions to get Hader there. What does it mean? Well, Lauren, that's a great question. And you, you mentioned the, the conversation about Ryan Presley. That was a really important detail. Uh, Chandler Rome wrote about this in The Athletic over the weekend about how Dana Brown, as the negotiations were picking up with Josh Hader, he put in a phone call to Ryan Presley because we know how many huge games Ryan Presley has closed out for the Houston Astros. And it's not entirely clear at this juncture, of course, the first year manager, Joe Espada, how he's going to balance these two all star level closers. Uh, do you see something where it was like the Cleveland Guardians years ago where you had Cody Allen closing it out, but Andrew Miller was was the guy that came in, whether it was the sixth, the seventh or the eighth inning? I could see something like that. There's just, for me, something about the way that Ryan Presley handles the ninth inning where I'm not sure how quickly I'd move him out uh, to put Hader in there, where you have seen in many instances, Lauren, Hader be able to go more than one inning. And when you're able to potentially have that, that expanded role for him and, and get more than three outs, I think it's a really important way that you could potentially use Josh Hader and you've got that right-left balance. And let's not forget how great Brian Abreu is as well. So three elite relievers yeah. at the end of the game. One reason why the Astros believe they could find their way back to the Yeah, ALCS. the more talent, the merrier is the plan in Houston. What are you going to do all week in Cooperstown, JP? Well, Lauren, I, we've got a busy week planned. As we, of course, we've got Joel Sherman is here, Jason Stark is here, Brian Kennedy's here. We've got we got MLB now I happening mean, for later fun. on today. And at some point, like live a little. Well, oh, for Which fun. restaurant but are I, you going to go to? I was getting there. MLB now. Is there a lounge? Lauren, MLB now is fun. And MLB JP. now is fun. Yes, there's a there's a wonderful place at, at the Otisago Hotel. But most importantly, Lauren, and this I promise you this video, I am going to skate today. Oh my gosh, there's a, there's we a beautiful want rink it. here at Badger Park. I'm going to skate at the rink. We'll, we'll, it may just be with my own cell phone, but I promise you I'm going to be on the ice because we got a beautiful <laughs> outdoor rink thanks to the village of Cooperstown, Badger Park, my favorite place to skate. We Terrible will place. air that tomorrow. <laughs> that is for darn sure. J.P. Morosi, enjoy it. Thanks so much, Maddie H.